Hello my friends, this is Jeannie. Welcome back. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I want to share with you a cute and quick little project that I am working on for my daughter's birthday. I have to get the invitations in the mail by tomorrow. So I spent a couple of days this week uh, designing her invitation. I am of course covering up <laughs> the details of where the party is but I just wanted to show you um, the invitations themselves I made these myself and I'm super proud of the way they turned out very um, simple very clean I think um, mature because it's 13 you know you can't be baby and what I did was I just used some forest themed uh, mushroom themed uh, graphics um, that I purchased from I think it's called the hungry peg they give out free I think it's weekly bundles and graphics and they also sell bundles as well and it's super super inexpensive and I bought this one bundle that included mushrooms and some foliage. So I used the mushroom and the foliage to just have borders on either side and uh, use some very nice fonts to create what I think is a perfect invitation for her 13th birthday. I did a half sheet. So for every eight and a half by 11, sheet of paper that I put through my printer I got two invitations I did not use cardstock I used um, a photo paper mat type paper or presentation paper by Epson and I absolutely love 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 the way it turned out in terms of how I am mailing this it's going to be an envelope within an envelope so the mailer itself is just gonna be a standard mailer but inside of the mailer is going to be this beautiful envelope that I made using my, my We Are Memory Keepers envelope maker and wallpaper. Yes, wallpaper, because we all know I have lots of wallpaper. So I made uh, the envelope to fit the invitation. The invitation, as it turns out, is five and a half by eight. So I made an envelope that would fit that size card. And then I stamped, I sealed the envelope with a wax seal. And a wax seal stamp that simply says, hello. Hopefully you can see that. So I thought I would just share um, the process with you in case you are interested in seeing how the We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board works. And um, I just thought it would be a nice fun little project to share with you. So that's what we are working on. So this is one that's done. I will slide this into a mailer because I don't think that envelope with a wax seal will make it through the mail properly. <laughs> it'll probably, if it gets there at all, it'll probably be like super damaged. So here's one of the envelopes with the invite inside. I'm not going to pull the invite all the way out, but it fits perfectly. Okay. So the first thing I had to decide in making these envelopes is what size my envelope is going to be. So after printing the invitations, cutting them, rounding the corners, because I did round the corners. I just think it looks a little more professional, a little more finished. I measured them. And as I said, they are five and a half by eight. So what you do if you have this uh, envelope punch board is you have some um, charts on the base of the board, which has card size, paper size, and score line. The card size is the size of the card that you want to make the envelope for. The paper size is the size of the paper you will need in order to make that envelope in that particular size. And then the score line is referring to where you line your paper, the edge of your cut paper along here, the top, right up here, okay, 
where you line it up there in order to make this score mark and start the envelope making process. It sounds a lot more complicated than what it really is. It's super simple and once you make one or two, you'll get the rhythm. Okay, so as I said, my card is five and a half by eight. So you can see that here, five and a half by eight, right there. And the paper size I need is ten and a half by ten and a half. You see that right there. And the score line I will have to line the paper up to is four and a half. So I took all my wallpaper and I cut it down to ten and a half by ten and a half sheets. Okay, so that's what this is. Now the score line of four and a half means I'm going to take one edge of my paper and I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to take one edge of my paper and I'm going to line it up along right there at the four and a half. Do you see that? Four and a half. That's where I'm going to line it up. And then the punch board comes with this little score tool. And what you're going to do is find that score guide. You see this right here? You're going to find that and that's where you're going to run your score tool right along that line right there and again making sure you're lined up to four and a half here before you make this score mark and then you press all right that's going to create a notch then you're going to rotate your paper And you know that score mark you just made? You're going to line it up with this score guide right here. So you see how I lined it up? Now that score mark is lined up with the score guide. And I'm going to again run my tool and create another score line and press. And you will rotate 90 degrees. And you repeat that until you complete your rectangle or your envelope shape. Okay? And again, rotate, lining up that score line with the score guide and creating a new score line. And then press. So. You do that four times and you have the basic shape of your envelope here. Now to round these corners here at the tips of each of the um, these little flips or flaps, <laughs> you're, you have um, a rounding tool. They call it a reverse punch. But basically what you do is you take the edge of the paper, slide it in, punch. See? It rounded that for you. You can also, if you have um, a punch, one of those um, corner rounder punches, I do have them. You can use that too, whatever you want to use. I just figure if the tool is here, I might as well use it. So you'll round the tips of each of these flaps. Okay. And then it's just a matter of gluing the envelope together. So what I do is I take my bone folder and I go through and I just fold and reinforce those score lines. I have to be careful with wallpaper. This paper is so um, pliable, is that the word? That sometimes it just wants to do what it wants to do and it doesn't even want to follow those score lines. <laughs> okay, so here is my envelope. So now what I am going to do is seal 
the bottom half. I'm going to use some fabric tack because this is uh, envelope. It has like a, not quite a paper coating, more like a vinyl coating. Use a little bit of fabric tack. Don't put too much. You do not want it to ooze out and seal your envelope <laughs> shut in a way that you don't want it to be shut. Fold this up. And if I did everything correctly, <laughs> hope, right, this should fit in here. Okay, so there you go. And then I would close this up and put a wax seal right there. So let's do, let's do a couple more and then uh, we will do a wax seal together. And that will conclude my share part of this little project. <laughs> so I hope everyone is doing well. To those who have purchased my wallpaper de-stashes, let me say thank you. You have no idea how much I appreciate you um, purchasing those bundles. I have so much wallpaper. Still have tons, tons more have to get through, but um, it's a timely process. It takes a lot of time and time is what I have little of right now, so I do it when I can. Again, I'm going to line up the edge of my paper to that four and a half. Score. Press. Rotate. Line up that score line with the score guide. Create a new score line. So time... As I was saying, it's something I just don't seem to have enough of lately. <laughs> but um, I hope to have some time this weekend to go ahead and uh, film more of the bundles and put them up for sale. All of the larger ones are sold. The next group that's coming up uh, are bundles of 50 in the flat rate bubble mailers. I think it's $8.50 to mail um, one of those bubble mailers. The price will include shipping. It will be smaller um, sizes of wallpaper. say I am having fun crafting with the wallpaper it's been a lot of fun in addition to working on these envelopes today for um, her party I also dyed some cheesecloth using is it writ that writ dye i am doing the tablescapes for her party and part of it includes um kind of like this mossy instead of a table runner i'm going to create kind of like a little forest along that same line and I wanted to create kind of a foresty, mossy um, surface to put all of the other items that I've made. I've made some candle holders, just, just some fun stuff for the table. And maybe I will film that and share, you, share with you what I've made. But um, instead of just a, a regular plain tablecloth, there will be a base, a white, like a cream color tablecloth covering the table. And as a table runner, I'm going to have some cheesecloth that I dyed moth green, moss green, 
And the reason I did that is because I want to create a mossy forest floor type effect on the table, but I don't, don't want to actually use moss. I don't want moss on the table. So that's the envelope. I do not want moss on the table. I do not want moss near um, where the food is going to be. And um, yeah, I just don't want that. So did a little research on Pinterest and saw some people using dyed cheesecloth. to create certain types of effects on their table and I thought why not <laughs> why not dye some cheesecloth forest green so that it looks like a mossy floor in a forest went on to Amazon found all of the supplies and that's what I did today. And I think it turned out it turned out great. The color is perfect. Oh, I forgot to punch. Punch. So as you can see, once you do this, it's super 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 easy. And just to show you, I have a round corner puncher here. Instead of using that um, punch in the back, I can use this too. So if you have like a decorative um, punch, you can use that on your envelope as opposed to um, using the punch back here. So it's whatever works for you, whatever makes you happy. Halloween on the brain a lot lately which is telling me I need to start working on some Halloween projects I love Halloween it's probably uh, one of my favorite holidays or celebrations I should say of the year I don't know I think Halloween and Christmas those are my two favorite. And if I had to rank them, I probably would rank Halloween number one and Christmas number two, I think. <laughs> now you could um, line the inside of this to cover up the writing, but that doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me, it is what it is. It's okay that people can see that I used or I recycled wallpaper to create these beautiful envelopes. Why not? Doesn't bother me. Okay, so let's do one more. Okay, so again, this is 10 and a half by 10 and a half. I'm going to, and the reason I flip it over is because I, I just um, prefer the score lines on um, the side with uh, little to no pattern because it's just easier for me to spot it that way. <laughs> I don't have the best vision. Lining it up with four and a half. Creating that score line and press. Rotate 90 degrees. Line up that score line with your score guide. Create your score line, press. Rotate 90 degrees. Line up your score line with that score guide. Create another score line and press. Line up your score line with your score guide. Create a score line and press. Okay. And then 
around the tips. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I prefer doing this. I like the rounded tips. I think it just looks, again, just more finished. Don't even need to use your bone folder, but I like my bone folder. <laughs> it's like an extra... Um, I don't know. It's like one of those tools I always reach for. Always in hand. <laughs> okay. This time, I'll flip this over so the writing is more on the bottom. You can always just uh, work your paper to kind of hide or disguise things you don't necessarily want people to see. If that bothers you, then you just fold your envelope in a way where you won't see it unless someone goes digging inside of the envelope, right? <laughs> okay. So I think you have a general idea of how this um, board works. I've had this board for a good long, 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 long time. Long, long time. All right. These two I will do later. So why don't we... Let me get a card. You get one that already has an invitation in it. This one has an invitation. Yeah, this one has an invitation inside of it. So let's move this over. Here is the envelope. I have some wax. I don't want to use this color. Kind of like this um, bronzy color. These are wax seal beads. Rose gold is this color. And I got this as part of a bundle I purchased from Ulta New. I find that four of these is fine. Could do five, but four works. I don't have a candle. I just realized today for the most part. Um, I don't have small candles in my home. I typically don't burn candles because I have cats. Cats and candles, not a good mix. So <laughs> I don't have those little tea lights. Um, here's a good workaround. If you have a hot glue gun, not a hot glue gun, a heat gun. <laughs> you can use your heat gun to um, heat your spoon and melt your candles. So that's what I'm going to do now. I think that'll do just fine. I have my wax seal that says hello. I'll just pour the wax. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm okay with imperfect. just let that sit and set really do I get a perfect seal because I think part of that is because I don't think my table is level <laughs> if I don't have a level table then the wax is going to do what the wax wants to do it's not going to spread evenly or it's not going to pull um, in one spot it will just tend to spread in whatever direction the tables leaning <laughs> so that's pretty good I'm happy with that. It says hello. And um, what I do is just to kind of pop that word a little bit. I'll take a little bit of the gold paint. And this is just some um, distress paint in the color gold. Put some on the tip of my finger and just um, tap it out so it's not super thick. That's what that, the, in case you were wondering what this is, <laughs> and just lightly brush. Across the hello. Okay. 
So that's what that is. <laughs> and that's essentially it, my friends. I think it's super quick, super easy to make these envelopes. I love the addition of the wax seal. It just gives it a little touch of something extra. And I want it to be something extra for her 13th birthday. And as I said, I don't think these envelopes would make it through the regular post like this. So my plan is to slide these into just a standard, uh, like maybe a yellow envelope mailer. So that is not the most aesthetically pleasing way for it to arrive. But once they open up and pull this out, they'll get the full effect, the full experience, the aesthetic I'm hoping to convey. So that is my share. But for those of you who have been watching um, these videos, I appreciate you taking the time to sit and craft with me. Um, if you like this video, um, be sure to give me a thumbs up. That really does go a long, long way to helping me with my channel. If you're not subscribed, please do so. I would love to have you. And if you're subscribed, and once you subscribe, be sure to activate that notification bell so that you are notified anytime I post a new video. Thank you, my friends. I will catch you all in the next video. Until next time, bye-bye.